Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. Today, we have the king of the terriers. (laughs) The Airedale. Yeah, the Airedale Terrier. So before we get into our interview, let's talk about the breed. They are known as being bold, determined, and stubborn. Yeah, and they're protective of the home and the family, so they're a good guard dog. They are. They are, absolutely. They're a versatile breed. So I didn't know this, but they were developed along uh, Lake Air in England, Ah. and they actually were bred with otter hounds and uh, two other breeds that are, or a couple other breeds that are now extinct. Um, But they, they would go into the water and go after rodents, so... Very interesting, um, but very versatile. They, they can do everything, according to all of our research. So a uh, large breed, that's why they are called the king of the terriers. They're the largest of the terriers, and they can do a lot. So um, let's, <laughs> let's talk about some of the, uh, the, the characteristics that a family might want to know about. Well, do they shed? They do. They do. I, uh, according to Marcella, not hugely, but they mm-hmm. do shed, so you need to know that. Um, regular brushing, regular like once a week brushing will help keep that, you know, to a minimum. Yeah, we, we seem to hear that a lot. Yeah. Maybe it's something we should do. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. We should brush a little more often. Well, they are terriers, so I kind of know the answer to this, but do they bark? They do. They're a boisterous breed, um, but... Generally, if they're given enough exercise and enough activity, they won't have that nuisance barking. But but they are a barker. Are they an active dog, would you say? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They yeah. are going to need about uh, you know, two good walks a day, mm. um, some 20 minutes of exercise. If you're an active family, you like to go for walks, for hikes, or, um, you know, Marcella will tell you the previous owners of uh, Izzy, rode a bike and she ran with them so <laughs> the very active a lot of energy and, and you know you know if you know terriers you know they have a lot of energy so this is a bigger terrier yeah. well one of the things i do know about terriers and i'm speaking from someone who's maybe a little bit prejudiced but they are genuinely very intelligent is that true for the airedale yes a very trainable dog so even if you do rescue like marcella did um, you you may have to uh, do some training at an older age and very quick to learn, very trainable. But mm. being a terrier, they don't want to do the same thing over and over for you. They don't want to sit nine times. Like uh. once they have it, they have it. They want to move on to the next thing. So when you have an intelligent dog that you're training, you've got to vary the training because they get bored easily. Yeah, I heard they can be a little stubborn too. Yeah, a so. little bit, a little bit. And generally a healthy breed. You know, since they are larger, hip dysplasia is something that you need to be concerned about. So, you know, take care of those joints, give them a good supplement, keep them active, um, and keep the weight off. So that's yeah. that's the general overview. We'll jump into the interview now. So Marcella is just a sweet, sweet lady, and her Airedale Izzy was actually rescued. So she will talk about the rescue uh, situation and um, what it was like acclimating Izzy to her household and um, just uh, what a pleasure it was to meet them. So without further ado, let's meet Marcella and Izzy. Hey everyone, we're here with Marcella and Izzy. And Izzy is an Airedale Terrier, which is the king of terriers. He's the king or queen in her case. So she's beautiful. She's rescued. Yes. Tell us first about her story and how you guys came about adopting her. All right. There is this page in Facebook that I find that it's called Airedale Rescue. In that page, I start looking and I saw that uh, they rescue dogs or people surrender dogs to them and they just posted the pictures and you just fill out an adoption paper and I applied for her. I saw her picture and I love it. 
This rescue group uh, works for the Carolinas, Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama. So they just bring you the dog from those places. Uh, Izzy was in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, she was owned by a family with a um, kids with a lot of kids and they didn't want to have her anymore because the little ones um, it was too much to have her plus all the kids and you said like five kids yeah they have five so kids and nine like, and babies yeah so they have her on a cage uh, mostly all of the day so um what? it was a cage that was too it was small. too small for her the yeah cage, it was, the cage would have been more appropriate for her brother the Welsh Terrier, exactly. which is not a good thing. <laughs> exactly. So, well, we we uh, fill out the application, they interview us, and we went to pick her up. Um, this is a story of how we learn her, and she learned us, because she's five years old. Okay. So she's already an adult. And she came with all the traumas from her past life and it was not an easy first love kind of situation. <laughs> it wasn't like you guys met eyes and the heart started flying. It was more that the, the, the lips snarled and the growling started. Yes, and <laughs> yes. Uh, because I have two kids. So we didn't know that she didn't like kids. Uh, we took it uh, one day at a time. We explained to our kids how to treat Easy, and we were very careful in how she was around the family, so yeah. we didn't have any accidents. There. So you wouldn't leave her alone with the kids. No. You always had to, and teaching yeah. the kids how to how approach to, her was yeah. very important. Exactly. Um, at one point, we thought in surrender her really? because she was too much. She's also leash reactive. So every time we walk her, she reacts to other dogs. Uh, we decided to train her. And in the trainer, we uh, learn that she's protecting us. So she she see other dogs. She thinks that the other dogs is going to attack us. Oh. So that's why she start jumping and growling and doing all this. Thing. Which is kind of typical terrier. I'm going to get you first before you can get me exactly. <laughs> or my family. Exactly. Um, she took, it took like a good four months for her to feel comfortable in the house. Mm -hmm. We have never caged her. She has the whole house and the backyard for herself. Uh, we don't limit the space in the house or for her. But she was not comfortable. She was like lost. And I have another dog that was maybe the only place that she feel comfortable was mm -hmm. being with him and yeah. playing with him. And you said, if I could back up, that mm -hmm. when when you got her too, that there was so much fur missing on her back because of being in the cage for so much, like all yeah. day, a cage that was too small for her. So you can imagine. So they say that dogs, once they're rescued, they a lot of times need several months to adjust anyway. But then with the trauma of being in a cage all the time and being uncomfortable, I mean, she, you guys had to really exactly. nurse her back. Yes. Uh, and I think it's the love what makes the difference because we we teach her that we are not going to hurt her. We are firm when she does something that we don't like, but we are never going to hurt her. Yeah. And we give a lot of kisses and hugs mm -hmm. and love to her. And now she's super mellow, super, yeah. super mellow with us. She knows that when we call her, she immediately comes. She's super obedient. Wow. She's super super well behaved. She had never had an accent in the house. She had never broke anything. So she's a perfect dog now. Aww. But as I said, it took some work from both sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had said that she was bitey as well. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people, if a bite happens, they will, okay, we're not going to do this. We have kids. We can't do it. But I, you're like my little hero over here because you guys said, okay, let's figure it out. Let's figure out why she did what she did and let's help her. Exactly. And I think, you know, it's important to remember the, 
you know, she had physical trauma, but she had mental trauma and she needed rehabilitation. Exactly. And when you adopt a dog, you cannot expect to have the perfect dog. Yeah. Something is in the history of that dog, in the past of that dog, that is going to mark him forever. Yeah. So instead of giving away, you have to try to help overcome the issue. Yeah. Or otherwise it will be a very other sad story that they ended in another family or in another situation that is going to be worse than the first one that they have. Yeah. If you have the love to adopt, keep it. Yes. And work with it. Absolutely. Now, being an Airedale, so she's a, a, a big terrier, so she wasn't meant to go into little holes and go after rabbits and things like that. So is she as active as your Welsh terrier? or She is very athletic and very Reactive. Okay. Yes. She actually, she requires a lot of walking. A lot of walking. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I think that before she got, in, she got a, in a bicycle with a previous owner. So she's used to that. Okay. So Running maybe along. it's her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we, we try to hike with her and mm -hmm. give her the proper exercise. Yeah. And um, also uh, because otherwise they get fat yeah so you don't want them big and fat no no and yeah. that is a that's a concern with Airedales is they put on weight easy hey, well I don't know because she's a girl maybe <laughs> could be yeah but um yeah so now is her fur the, the same or similar to the to Paco yeah no this one is softer okay she is more curly yeah. than Paco but the hair is softer and she looks is more hair than than okay than so she's yeah. gonna shed more yeah, yeah. it's not wiry yeah it's yeah. softer and um just in general are they is she pretty healthy yeah she's super healthy good yeah no issues at all um they are they are just very very nice they are the perfect like family dog if you like big dogs because they don't shed that like other big breeds okay it's not that much of the sharing it, they are mellow but they are protective as well so it's like the perfect combination yeah for an active family yeah. that yeah. will be able to do those hikes and, and things like that yeah um anything else that we should know i know she's unique because of her situation um but obviously she must be pretty smart if you guys have been able to you know help her transformation she's super smart she I can tell that this breed is smarter than the other. Yeah. Yeah. She learns super fast. And I don't know if it's her, but she's not a starborn like the whale. Oh, okay. She's a little less she's, stubborn. Yeah. She <laughs> is easier. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, she is beautiful. Hey, sweet girl. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, okay. I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get an Airedale next. <laughs> Her teeth are beautiful. Do you guys yeah. brush regularly? or? Well, we do, but she came like that. So wow. I think, yeah, they were taking care of that. Yeah. Well, you know, this is a great, just a great testament to what the right family rescuing adopting a dog that really needed it because it sounded like the situation she was in before was just not not good for her at all and to see that she has totally transformed with you guys is just so beautiful yeah thank you so much for sharing it with you. us thank you so much oh, you know i i was keeping my distance because Izzy is, you know, a little cautious around people she doesn't know. But at the end, when she came up to me, it was like, ah, oh, yes, <laughs> we've done it. And, and, and then I just wanted to cuddle with her. So that's yeah. always fun. But uh, what Marcella was just great. And you can tell they, you know, it was a struggle. You know, not every rescue dog is just going to come into your household and be like, ah, oh, I'm here. This is great. We all love each other and let's get on with life. There was a, an ad, a, adjustment period and, you know, you have to be patient. You have to give it several months. And thank goodness that Marcella and her family 
put in the effort, yeah. found a good trainer. Oh, something that I heard several times and I forgot to mention in the beginning is that you must use positive reinforcement with this breed. They do not respond to aggressive training. And we say that for all dogs, um, but that was specifically mentioned in uh, several videos that I watched about this breed. So make sure that, that you guys bear that in mind. So, yeah. yeah. You know, the thing that, that when I was listening to the video while we were shooting it, I'm like, wow, they were going to turn this dog back over and you could tell the connection between these two. So what yeah. you just said about putting in the effort, putting in the work and being patient is very important. It's not all butterflies and hearts. <laughs> you know, it there you know, each dog has a personality and you have to get to know that personality. And I'm so grateful and I'm sure they are that they were able to keep Izzy. Yeah. Uh, the bond was tremendous and you can see how much love Marcella has for Izzy and yeah, I'm sure they feel it was the best decision they made too. So a happy, happy ending. Um, let's talk about the nerdy stuff that I geek out over. Um, let's talk a little bit about the history. Now, one thing I didn't tell you because I, I, I just wanted to keep it for the show is, did you know that John Wayne got his nickname from the nickname, the Duke from his childhood dog? Duke? No, yeah, I did. I did actually know that, but I didn't know it was an Airedale Terrier. It was an Airedale Terrier. Yeah. Ah, very cool. I feel like my headphones are slipping off here. What's <laughs> going on with me today? Um, yeah. So Michael is a huge John Wayne fan. And so when I was watching a couple of videos, they said that John Wayne had a childhood dog named Duke that went everywhere with him. And apparently he went to, he would go to the local fire station and they would say, here's the big Duke and the little Duke. And so, uh, so that's how you got the name. That's how yeah. he got the name. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I knew it came from his, his, uh, his childhood dog. dog. Yeah. And you are a fan of presidential history. Yes. So three presidents had Airedales, Harding, Wilson, and Coolidge. And what I loved was that I don't, honestly, I don't know much about our presidents, which is shameful. So I'll just, you know, I know more about dogs, but I, I wonder how much more I have in common with uh, President Harding because he had a cabinet chair made for his Airedale named Laddie Boy. And so he could be in, in, in on important meetings. Well, based on the Harding presidency, he was probably pretty high up in the cabinet. <laughs> So, um, I love that, that there is a chair for his Airedale. Yeah. Um, the author, John Steinbeck also had an Airedale. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. Do you know, since we're doing fun facts and I didn't bring this up, do you know where I was introduced to the Airedale? No. Andy Griffith's show. Really? Correct. There was an episode where they were going to have the state inspector that goes around and inspects jails for the and he was coming to town and they heard he was a he was a hard case well opie which is if you've never seen the show that's andy's son was a little child he comes in with all these stray dogs <laughs> and i remember most of the dogs were like you know mixed breed and there was a few that weren't but there was this grand awesome regal regal looking dog and it was an airedale oh and i think i saw that episode with you he's a big andy griffith fan too yeah so i'm <clears throat> i'm a 90 year old person in a 50 year old body <laughs> anyway but the the whole thing behind i won't ruin it if you want to see it but it turns out great that these dogs were there and it's a really cool episode and if you're a dog nerd even if you don't like andy griffith show you should watch that yeah because that's a it's a very dog nerd episode episode yep but that was where i i was like i remember going what kind of dog is that and and you know we didn't really have the internet or anything back then so i went to my dad and my dad's like, i don't i don't know but i remember i got an uh, encyclopedia and uh and it i went to dogs and kept flipping through and i finally found it oh, i didn't have to cool. go too far because it was in the a's 
<laughs> oh, and encyclopedias. That was Google before Google. Yeah, they were books that had information in them. And you <laughs> that's where you would find things out. Um, so what was also cool was they were, um, Airedales were used in World War I, mm. and they were used as guards, as messengers. They would take first aid supplies and um, just a very multi-purpose dog. They were used for a lot. But what I gathered out of everything was that they are really going to be a protective family dog, a wonderful family dog, as Marcella mentioned, be, as long as you're an active family, great with her kids, great with the entire family. And, you know, it's a real testament to the breed and to Izzy in particular that she came from a situation that wasn't great. You know, she was kept in a crate all the time, a crate that was too small for her to where it rubbed the fur off of her back. The family, thankfully, went to a rescue group for Airedales because they just couldn't handle Izzy. And they, you know, this dog goes from a chaotic home without a lot of attention and exercise and love, goes to this new family that, you know, had to put in a lot of time and effort, but oh my gosh, the rewards are amazing. Mm -hmm. And this dog is just wonderful. And what a rehabilitation story. That's just, that, that was a big thing for me. So, you know, look at what you can do when you rescue a dog like that. I mean, it's just, I, I would... I'm, I've really said to Marcella, you're like my hero. I mean, I just, and there's people, there's a lot of you out there that do that and it's just awesome. And it couldn't be a better situation for all of them. So we hope you've enjoyed learning all about the Airedale Terrier, a little bit of fun facts and history involved as well. And, uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. You can find us everywhere online at dog nerd show dognerdshow at gmail.com is our email address if you would like to drop us a line. If you would like to be interviewed to be on the show, we can do it via Zoom or Skype, and we would love to chat with you about your breed. And uh, what? tell them what, what else they can do. They can... Yeah, there's a little button down here. It's free. I just found this out. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost a thing. And what you can but do is... it doesn't cost a thing, but it gives us so much joy and happiness. That is true. And so you can click on that. And when you click on it, there'll be this old bell that pops up. And you just click on that bell and it'll let you know every time we put a new video out. What he meant was click on subscribe. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the show. Yep. And then if you click the bell every time we have an episode, which is every two weeks, yep. you'll be notified. And you can actually watch when it premieres with us live and we'll be chatting in the chat or yeah. you can just watch with us. But we uh, we really appreciate it. Keep the comments coming. Yep. I am We are loving interacting with you guys and hearing about your specific dogs, some of the breeds we've covered. And I love it when people say that they love the history part because I do too. <laughs> and also tune into us on your podcast when you can't get to your computer to watch us on YouTube. You can always, while you're cruising down the road or sitting in a traffic jam, listen to us on our podcast. And that is on every podcast server out there. So yeah. And thank you to all of our podcast listeners. We see you we are so glad that you're tuning in regularly and let us know what you want to see more of. Until then, thanks guys. Bye. Bye.